All right, guys, we're on 12.3. We're talking about concentrations, which are a measure of the amount of solute in a given amount of solvent or solution. Basically, how strong is your solution? We're going to look at these four. Make sure you write these down. Push pause now, and then I'm going to go through each one. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is percent composition by mass. This is a review from Chapter 7. Um, here, you need to write this down. It's grams of solute over grams of solution times 100 because it's a percentage. Now, here's the key. The solution is the solute and solvent together. So it's both the liquid and what you're putting in there. So you're going to have to add those together. So add up your solute plus your solvent. Okay, that way you get your grams of solution right here. Okay, guys, I'm going to do two examples with you, but I need you to work quickly so that we can get these finished. All right, pause when you need to if I go too fast. Number one, what is the percent composition of a solution that contains 115 grams of salt, sodium chloride, dissolved in 500 grams of water? Well, again, you're going to take your grams of solute, which is 115 grams, and then your solution is on the bottom. Well, we just talked, that's a G, we just talked about the solution being the solvent, which is 500 grams, and the solute, which is 115. So you need to add those two together for the bottom number, and that'll give you 615 grams. Then we're going to multiply all of that by 100. Go ahead and do your math. Hit pause if you need to, because I'm about to answer. You should come up with 18.7%. 18.7% of the solution is the solute. We're going to go on to number two. How many grams of KMNO4, potassium permanganate, are needed to make 500 grams of a 12% solution? So we've got to work this backwards, guys. We're going to put our 12%, whoopsie, 12.0% is equal to to some grams of KMNO4 over 500 grams, that's your total solution here, times 100. Okay? So this is an X that I'm looking for, so I probably should have used a different color, but I'll just change the letter, or the X. There we go. Now, what we're going to do here is divide both sides by 100. And that's going to give us 0.12 is equal to still x over 500. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 500 to get that off the bottom. When you multiply that, you should get that x equals 60 grams. So there my answer is 60 grams to get a 12% solution. Okay? Okay, now percent composition is pretty good because that's something we can all understand. But these are two that you hear in the environmental realm more than anything. Parts per million and parts per billion. You need to copy this down. Parts per million is the mass of the solute over the total mass of the solution. So just like we did, except now we're multiplying by a million, 10 to the 6th, or a 1 with 6 zeros. Okay, nope, that's comma, that's comma. And then parts per billion is the same thing, mass of the solute over the total mass times a billion, or one with nine zeros. Now, you will hear this far more often when you hear about oil spills or when you hear about mercury in water or things like that that are more environmental in nature because they ha they can't take it out of a hundred um, or out of a percentage because it wouldn't make as much sense. The numbers wouldn't be as big, so they have to use millions and billions, okay? So we're going to do a couple of examples, or actually just one example, and then I'm going to move on. Okay, so here's our example. A 900-gram sample of seawater is found to contain 0 .0067 grams of zinc. Oops, sorry. So, express this concentration in parts per million. Well, we need the mass of our solute, 
which is 0 0.0067 grams, zinc over the total mass, which is 900. The solution is 900. Then we're going to multiply it by 10 to the 6 because they want parts per million. Do your math, multiply it out, and remember this 1 times 10 to the 6 can be written, I mean this 10 to the 6 can be written like this when you multiply it out, or you can just type this in and hit E6 on your calculator. Okay? Now, when you do that, you should get 7.4, and our units are parts per million. 7.4 parts per million. So that's, that's not a lot. Out of every million parts, 7.4 of them are zinc. That's not a whole lot, but you still need to keep an eye on these because even small amounts of mercury in our water can make people sick, or small amounts of lead in our water can make people sick. So these are numbers that you do need to keep up with. Okay, molarity. This is the big one for us. This is the one we will use most often, and this is on the back of your green sheet. I'm going to show you where at the end. Now, molarity is the number of moles per liter of solution. Basically, guys, this is how we determine how strong or weak a solution is, whether it's an acid or a base or just a, a solution in general. We can determine if it's weak or strong depending on how many moles there are per liters of solution. So here you are probably going to have to do a t-chart to get me to moles. And then you'll just put it over liters. Make sure it's liters, not milliliters, not kiloliters. You're going to have to convert it, okay? All right, so here's our practice problems for molarity. Number one, what is the molarity of a 500 liter sample of solution that has 60 grams? Well, I've got to have moles of the solute on top, so I'm going to switch that grams over to moles. Now I'm going to set up a t-chart for that. And then we're going to solve. All right, here's my T-chart. And if you add up sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen, you'll see that it's about 40 grams. These cancel. Do your math. You might, you're going to want to pause a bunch here, guys, because I've got to go fast. And it's about one and a half moles. And then all you do is put that over your liters of solution. Divide, and you see that this is 3.00 molar. Okay, it's pretty strong. On number two there, I need you to figure that one out. You're going to have to work backwards. I'll set it up here in a second. Okay, for number two, you've got milliliters, so you're going to have to switch that over to liters by moving your decimal back one, two, three places. So 0 0.250 liters. And you know that it's a 3.00 molar solution, but you don't know how many grams, or in this case, how many moles. So here, you're going to work backwards, multiply by 0 0.250 on the bottom, times 0 0.250 on the right. That'll cancel. Here you'll get 0 0.75 mole. NaCl. And then I just need you to switch it over to grams. I went ahead and did that quickly. So here these cancel. Your answer is 43.8. All right. Okay, this is our last one. This is molality. This one is not used as often as molarity. And if you'll notice, it's got a lowercase m as its unit which is kind of weird because that would be meters too, but it works for us because we don't use meters that often in chemistry. Now, this is the concentration of a solution where you're using moles over a kilogram of solvent. Over a kilogram of solvent. So you can see why this isn't as common because we don't generally want grams of a liquid, but sometimes you use it. All right, here's our practice problem for molality. So here you've got 17.1 grams of glucose and 275 grams of water but we need moles over kilograms so here I'm going to change this grams to kilograms by moving my decimal back and then I'm going to change 17.1 grams over to moles and every mole of glucose just trust me has 180.18 grams 
So when I divide there, my moles are 0 0.0949 moles. And divide that by 2.275 kilograms, you get 0 0.345 mole. Okay, sorry this is so fast. All right, so here we're going to talk about diluting something. <clears throat> and in order to dilute something, you've got to change either your amount of liquid or your amount of solute. So here's what we're looking at. Here's your equation. No matter what you're doing, you're going to have mol molarity times volume of your starting condition. So that's M1 times V1. This is not a negative in front, okay? Equals molarity times volume of the second or of your ending conditions after you've changed something. So, this is like us diluting the Kool-Aid. If you realize that you've got way too much sugar in there, all you can do is add some more water, okay? And when you, you're um, adding water, you're increasing volume, which decreases your overall molarity, okay? Here's a couple of problems. So, we're going to use that M1, V1 equals, whoopsie, M2, V2. You need to memorize that, okay? So, here's a couple of practice problems. You need to set these up. What's your M1? What's your V1? Look here, M1, sorry, V1 is 340 milliliters, M1 is 0.5 molar. What would the concentration be if I add 560 milliliters more water to it? So that here I've got M1 and V1 and I've got V2. I'm looking for my new concentration, okay? So here... M1 is 340. No, sorry. That's V1. M1 is 0 0.5 molar. And we can use any units as long as they stay the same. Then M2 is your unknown. V2, well, that's going to be 560 plus the 340 which hopefully you can add those together real quick and see that that's 900. All right, I'm going to set this up and solve. You try it on your own using that equation. Okay, here's your equation. First thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 900 milliliters, and that should give you M2 when you do your math is 0 0.18 molar. All right, now make sure you have this down because I'm about to erase it. Okay, for number two, if I dilute 250 milliliters, well, that's your starting volume, of 0 0.1 molar lithium acetate, that's your starting molarity, to a volume, now your total volume is 750, what will the concentration be? Well, again... We're looking for molarity. So just plug this back in and solve. So I've plugged everything in. And to solve, I'm going to get rid of this 750 on both sides. And then I'm going to type all that in my calculator. Hopefully you found M2, or your second molarity, is 0 0.033 molar. All right? Now... It's a lot of work, so make sure you're practicing, okay? All right, guys, homework set is 12-3. Honors is doing all. Standard, you may do odd only. Make sure you check your math. And I just wanted to quickly show you where molarity and molality are on your green sheet. It's always on the back so that you know where it is. Good luck, guys.